made a long plan and did yeah. it, and it just opened. So, oh, there's 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 no, there's I don't think there's a crash time. Yeah, it's not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, big steps, right? I don't think it's a money. Okay. Is everyone showing? Okay. Uh, Christian can't come. Okay. Because already said that. She knew that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear from Paul? Is he maybe? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Jack's out today. Uh, I see. He doesn't know. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Just curious. Thanks, I'm not trying to. Do you have four? I don't know. Uh, Was four. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Everyone have a good Halloween. Any creative costumes? No, I didn't wear a costume. No. No, I didn't either. Did you? I saw me. You. It's right. I saw me in a Power Ranger outfit. <laughs> yeah, Power Ranger. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh, it was very last minute. And then the thing couldn't Velcro, so I had to wear a cape on my back. You know, it was like, yeah. we all got some superheroes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you This is kind of amazing. I think I Or warning, from what I'm currently seeing, the angle of the camera, I don't personally know how to adjust it. We're technically all on there, but it is very ceiling focused. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, I don't know how we would adjust that either. Yeah, so it may be when we do start mm -hmm. and it kind of detects our audio, it'll kind of focus down, but just I, I personally don't know how to adjust it. We will be recorded, we'll be seen. Yeah. Right. But it, it might be a lot yeah, of ceiling tiles. I think I have to go on this. Yeah. There is no access on Zoom anymore, right? Even though it says up there. Um, there isn't, I believe it's unless one of us, and I'm sick or something and have to work from home. Yeah, so under like yes. emergency situations, that's when we can open it up to public comment on Zoom, but people can still log into Zoom and watch it. We just can't take public comment. I see, Zoom. yes. I knew there was some adjustment. Okay, yeah. that's helpful. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think Zoom is going to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Is here. He's our girl. Nice. We're just counting ourselves because Kristen's not coming. Oh, she's not. She's out. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Nice. That's usually a little late. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We want to wait a couple minutes. 
I'm going to do the one just come Well, I think we've got a big agenda, so we can start and we can, if he comes in, then we just add it. I think we'll have Yeah, we'll be, yeah, we're good for four. So we'll just have to stop that, but good to go. Yeah, next week. Yeah, I think Mark is present when they come in. Yeah, we'll stop. So, okay. Here we have quorum and are ready to start the meeting. Okay. I call this meeting to order. Welcome to the November 4th, 2024 meeting of Art in Public Places Committee. The recording secretary uh, will take roll. Chair Bumgarner? Present. Vice Chair Kiefer is absent. Committee member Azadarian. Present. Committee member Faulkner. Present. Committee member Nathanson. Committee member Puentes. Present. And committee member Stewart. Let the record reflect that all committee members are present with the exception of Vice Chair Kiefer, committee member Nathanson, and committee member Stewart. Thank you. Um, um, do we have any modifications to the agenda today? <laughs> We do. do. Um, uh, the presenter for 7 1 is, is running late, so I'd like to move that to uh, last on the agenda. Okay. Great. Okay. I'll we'll move Joe Salinas to the end of the meeting. Thank you. Um, anything else? That's good. Okay. Um, we move to approval of the minutes. We received the minutes, one set of minutes on October 7th, 2024, was attached to the agenda for your review. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes um, from those that were at the meeting? Okay, I'll assume these are approved as submitted. The minutes are approved as submitted to you. Thank you. Okay, number six. Um, this is the time of public comments when any person may address matters not listed on our agenda today, separate, and but which are within the subject matter of this jurisdiction. Public may comment on agenda items when the item is called later if they want to talk about those. Um, each speaker is allowed three minutes, which will be timed. Do um, any people like to comment at this time before the agenda comes up? Okay. No. You're not. No. They're going to, are you going to, you're yeah. here for, no, they're not going to. Are you, we're just okay. listening. Okay. okay, great. If you'd like to introduce yourself, please do. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Adrian Littman. Hi. Uh, I'm a professional artist. I live and work in Santa Rosa. And uh, one of the things that I want to <coughs> address is the um, uh, public art donation to the city. So uh, in between larger projects, I continue working and I make things for possibly temporary calls. So I sell something and some I donate to the cities, which I did to a bunch of things, including Santa Rosa. So um, I have a sculpture ready. And I found a location in the city that I think would be appropriate. And I'd like to show it to you and maybe you will discuss it and consider it in future meetings and let me know. It's this thing, it's called the <clears throat> interruption. It's a uh, uh, all polished uh, aluminum. And I found this spot, which is a fourth street and, and uh, college across the state from a uh, grocery outlet. It's like a little triangle uh, yes. mm -hmm. part like with two benches. And I think that thing would be, would look nice to put it in there as, yeah. a, as a little accent. Yeah. So if possible, I'd like to leave this thing with you and maybe give it consideration in a future meetings and let me know if that's a possibility, I'm ready to do it. You know, if not, or maybe you want another location in the city or whatever you decide. Yes. Is that okay? To leave it with email you? it to me. Um, just a just a digital the image thing, and I'll I'll be in touch over email. Oh, uh, okay. So I I think I, I can find you. And I have your I have your email from and that was forwarded. I believe. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I know you have a, a another thing on the agenda, but can I address it now? Um, no, you can no, wait though. For I that. have to wait I, until yeah, then. We can't let we can't have things out of order just the way it works. Okay, so. that might take too long. So I, never, I understand. <laughs> so maybe I'll put it in the email and send it to you. It's okay. related to the temporary program that you're gonna okay. vote yeah. on or something like that. That's Absolutely. it. Okay. Like Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thank you. 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 It ends our public comment. To close that and we'll move on 
to number seven, and we're going to move ahead to um, number 7.2, the temporary art block. Meredith will present that recommended action is to approve the project plan for this temporary art block. Yep. Thank you. Um, so in front of you, you have um, the outline project plan for the temporary art walk. Um, as you know, we've discussed this art walk um, at the last two meetings, I believe, on the overview of what we're looking at. Um, and per the guidelines of APPC, um, we need to approve a project plan in order for me to move forward with this. Um, so in front of you, you'll see the outline of the description. Um, the goals, um, and these were all taken from the previous slides that, that we've reviewed before. I'm, I'm happy to go over it if you'd like me to read through each, each one. Um, again, the one thing that we have yet to decide on is the, um, the name of the art walk. Uh, and it's, I'm more than happy to open up this call for art this month as temporary art walk, looking for sculptures as we still continue to discuss what the title of this art walk would be. Um, and the outline of the, um, the proposed budget, which was $75,000 um, that was approved in this year's budget. Um, again, some of that um, would not be all paid out this year because we'd be paying um, half of the stipends up front, half of them on deinstallation in two years. Um, also, um, with opening up the call a little late um, and depending on installation, we may not be able to install until July or August of next year, which would be next fiscal year, because um, some things are just taking a little bit longer, but we'll get to it. So, um, so the recommended action for this is to um, approve the project plan for the temporary art. Yeah, I just had one question. Um, yeah. correction, and that was for the estimated timeline, November 31st. Is that going to be November 13th or no, or December 1st? Oh, yeah, because there's no, it would be the end of this month is what I'm looking at doing. Oh. So um, if we get the project plan approved today, mm -hmm. um, I'm still waiting. Um, the call for art platform that we discussed at the last meeting, I'm still waiting on the city attorney's approval of that agreement. Okay. And so as soon as I get that approval, I'll be starting to post these calls. So my hope is, is that I can post this call by the end of the month. Oh, okay. So just like the 30th? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and how long is the window for responses once that call is out? I'm putting about six weeks. Um, the application deadline would be January 15th. Um, again, I put estimated timeline because if that um, call for our agreement from the city's attorney office, if I don't get that back in November, all of this again will just be pushed out. But I'm, I'm thinking a six week timeline for the call to be open. Okay. Any questions or comments from our committee? <laughs> yes, uh, and is there any public comment on this item? Okay, great, thank you. I'll close that then. Um, so we need a motion to approve the project plan. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the project plan as submitted. Second. Great. Is, um, any more discussion or would you like to vote by the way? All right, Chair Bumgarner. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> sorry, did I do a mispronunciation? I'm sorry. Did I do a mispronunciation? No, I was going to oh. start saying some word. It was just not. <laughs> 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 committee member Azadirian. Yes. Uh, committee member Faulkner. Yes. Committee member Quintus. Yes. Okay, that motion passed, or that vote passes with four ayes with three absents. Um, so that motion is approved to approve the project plan for the temporary art walk. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, hey, moving along. Um, Earth Day Art is 7.3. Meredith will present the public art, art project plan for Earth Day Art, and recommended action is to approve the public art project plan. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I was approached by um, Water, the uh, department that helps with the Earth Day um, downtown in April, and uh, they would like to do some art up for the month of April for Earth Day. 
And I think this is a great opportunity to start involving um, our art community um, and looking at our budget. Um, this wasn't approved in, in this year's budget. And so that's I'm an outline sort of what we'd be taking off of our budget for this. Uh, we'd be looking to display um, for up to one month for um, April, 2025 in Courthouse Square, uh, some temporary art. Uh, the goals would be to raise awareness, um, to highlight environmental issues, raises awareness, um, or uses recycled material or natural elements. Um, we're looking to support local artists and encourage creativity um, to provide a platform for local artists to showcase their work um, and pieces that reflect environmental themes. And also placemaking to enhance the character of downtown Santa Rosa, making it more inviting and reflective space for our residents and visitors. The eligibility would be for California artists or artist teams, um, age 18 or older. Um, it would be located in Courthouse Square. Um, you'll see I outlined the roles and responsibilities here um, that I prepare the project plan and RFP, uh, pre screen applications, um, form a selection panel, facilitate the selection process, notify applicants, and prepare and manage the artist contracts. Uh, we put together a selection panel that would have one to two um, art and public places committee members um, and some other from our department and most likely another community member to sit on that. Um, you'll have to approve the project plan and also approve final artist selections. Um, the selection process would be an open competition, a request for proposals, Ideally, it would be um, completed work already. Uh, submission requirements, um, they can each submit up to two artworks with three views each. Um, and again, this would be posted through the call for art platform. Um, they need to submit a statement about Earth Day, an image list and description, the art installation plan, the artist res resume, and a project budget. The selection process, we'd have the selection jury, um, and then we go through the evaluation criteria, which is on the artistic merit, thematic relevance, innovation, feasibility, and overall contribution to Earth based diversity and impact. Um, the jury would select the final artworks, um, and they'd, we'd also present that to the Art and Public Places Committee. Um, the estimated total project budget for this is 14850 um, that's doing the call for art to post uh, $500, putting $1,000 into marketing, um, artist stipends of $10,000. So I'm leaving this open a little bit with the artist stipends to see what their project could be. So um, my goals for this is to open up the possibility of having one to two artists, or we could have five artists, depending on what type of artwork um, is submitted. So the hopes is maybe with a selection <laughs> panel, we would review and say, do we want one large piece to, as a statement piece for Earth Day, or do we want to support maybe five or six artists with smaller stipends to do some work? Um, the estimated timeline as to approve the project plan, RFP published November 30th. Um, and the application deadline, January 1st. And this would have to move a little faster because we would have contracts and artwork installed in April. Um, so my hope is the selection process um, would be January, and we would present this to APPC in February, uh, and then dive into contracts and the artwork install for April. So today I'm seeking um, the project approval um, to move forward with Earth Day Art for Hope House Square. How long would the work be up for? Um, the month of April is what we're looking for. Um, again, I'm not giving it like a strict install date and deinstall date because depending on the work, possibly someone may submit something that can only be up for three days, but we really like it. So I want to be a little flexible to set our first time doing it for Earth Day yeah. to see what do people submit um, and sort of broaden the idea of the creativity of what they can do. Um, what happens to the piece after April? It would be deinstalled and the artist, artist owns it. So okay. it's just temporary art. They would they would retain all ownership rights. Okay. Got it. What kind of protection do we have for like security of the work or is it you know I don't even know what security is like on Courthouse Square? Well, we don't have actual security. The police do monitor Courthouse Square. Mm -hmm. So it's um I would foresee it as being safer than um in a park where it's not being monitored. Um, but that is an issue, right. um, you know, with artwork and graffiti, et cetera. So 
um, the artist would take on the ownership of that with their insurance right. um, for any vandalism that would be done. You know, I hope that doesn't happen, but no, I you know, <laughs> yeah. Would we, would, I mean, would that be up to the committee or would that be a, a, something that people would take into consideration, like how sturdy and stable this is, mm -hmm. given it's out in the wild and there's lots going on? Well, the durability and stability, that would be part of the art requirements. So um, depending on the size, it may need stamped engineering drawings. Um, you know, all, all of that plays a role because of public safety. Right. Um, and, and, and the anchoring of what type of work this is. So mm -hmm. um, those would all be submitted with their project plans and installation. Um, and if we ever do want to look at something that requires security, let's say for three nights downtown, that would just be worked into the project budget as mm -hmm. if it's something we want to add security for, for a large installation. Okay. Which is possible. And, yeah. And it's just mm -hmm. interesting. I had it. We haven't kind of done that. Why I've been here. So thank you. Any other comments or discussion from the committee? Any public comment? Oh. <laughs> we just have to ask every time. Um, okay. Um, we need a motion to approve this project plan. I make a motion to approve the public art project plan for earthbound a sustainable future. Second. Second. Thank you. Okay. Um, did we vote? Okay. We are now ready to vote. Okay. Thank you very much. Chair Baumgartner? Um, yes. Committee member Azadirin? Azadirin? Yes. Committee member Faulkner? Yes. Committee member Puentes? Yes. All right. Let the record show that the vote passed with four ayes and three absences. And it is moved to approve the public art project plan. Okay, I do have a quick question again, too. So this is just for one piece, correct? Yes. Or, or possibly more. one piece per person? Is that what we're looking at? Or two pieces? Two, this is up to two artworks. Is that per, per submission? Person. So is that per person? Do we can do two pieces. Right. Okay. Can can submit, submit two can pieces. Submit two pieces. Oh, got it. So they can submit it. Can be by different artists, but in one submission, Same one person two can two submit two pieces. To be artist, considered, <laughs> two pieces to be considered. Okay, did that read wrong? No, I might be reading it wrong. So, no, that's is it the committee that votes on the pieces? No, <laughs> who would vote on the piece? Oh no, vote. I thought you said worked. No vote. Um. It's a selection panel. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Special panel will be commissioned to do that. Okay. Oh, you good with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Um, moving towards 7.4, which is program update. The Meredith will present an arts and culture program update. This is information only. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, we have a lot going on in October, and so I wanted to update you guys on, on some cool things that have been happening. Uh, first, we had a graffiti cleanup down at Prince Memorial Greenway with uh, Joe Salinas and his artwork. Um, a lot of community members came together, and it was awesome to see. Um, Nathan was there. Thank you with your friend. Um, so um, we cleaned up the mural, we've added an anti-graffiti coating, um, I need to add one more coat still, wait 10 to 15 days. Um, all ages participated, which was really awesome to see as well. Um, and so that's the start of the cleanup. Um, the mural next to it, I'm waiting on a quote from Art Start um, to get that cleaned up as well um, and get that graffiti coated. Um, and it looks really beautiful, so we were really excited for that. Is there a lot of repainting, like putting new color mm -hmm. on? Yeah. 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 It looks beautiful. Uh, we hosted the um, Northern California Public Art Administrators Network um, about, I guess it's been a week and a half now. We had about 20 of them attend and we gave a tour of our public art collection, which was really great. Um, we started down, we started at City Hall. We went to Prince Memorial Greenway and then ended up downtown. We talked a lot about the maintenance of public art. Um, I showed them some temporary art locations, what we're looking to do and got really great feedback. So 
Um, there was people from Davis, Sacramento, Palo Alto, and it was, it was really great. So um, yeah, everyone was really impressed with our art collection, right? Of all the different variety of things to have. So um, it was really good to put us on the map for that. Did you organize that? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Are you part of that group? I am, yeah. I, I was. And then um, they said they needed someone to host the um, walk. And I said, well, I'll do it. And then well, I don't really know the collector that well yet. But even that was <laughs> that was really exciting for me because I wanted to see their view of what we have and getting that input, you know, positive and negative of, of how are other cities cities tackling the similar issues that we have. Yes. And what was the main conversation? Was there any kind of maintenance? Maintenance, maintenance is a lot. Um, insurance contracts, we ended up talking a lot about other things that happen on the back end. Um, okay. take a lot of time, approval processes. Um, uh, you know, working with different artists, different mm -hmm. materials, security. Yeah. You said you pulled Tara into. She did. Yes. Yeah, did that was saying that. She was did. great. Okay. And she, um, she gave a lot of insight into our public art collection and stuff I didn't know about on how things yeah. started and, and all of that. So we tag teamed before. Oh, that's great. I really like your curious kind of open posture. <laughs> no, really. It's good. It's refreshing. It's great. Thanks. We will have um, a new request for qualifications opening up soon. Um, I've been working with the water department. Um, they have a grant for Colgan Creek um, to put art. Um, this is a, a, an area that they're doing a whole restoration project um, for. And um, the call for art is expected to open in November. It's actually ready to open, but I'm waiting on the cafe services agreement to get this posted as well. Um, this is funded by a water department grant. And um, the maximum project budget for this is 28,500. That does not include the stipends for the RFP, um, which would be 500 each with three people um, doing the RFP. So the full project budget for that is 30,000. Um, the request for qualifications will be open to artists or artist teams that are local tribe members or collaborating with local tribe members and residing in the United States. Um, so you'll be seeing that call for art or the RFQ um, soon on our website, and I'll probably be sending it out to you to um, send out to your um, uh, to your contacts as well. Um, and then uh, it's a mural, so that would need to end up getting approved through this committee. When do you see that closing? You know, I, I believe it's probably going to be in January sometime. Again, we're sort of waiting on the yeah. um, FA services agreement. Um, but this does, um, the grant, we do have to use this money by, I believe it's end of 2026. Um, so with the process of an RFQ and an RFP, this will take some time to start attempting. And I can't really see that map. Can you oh, sorry. tell me where it is, more or less? It's on um, the west side of Santa Rosa, southwest. Um, I don't have the exact street names. I can tell you. Yeah, yeah. Well, first, I wanted to ask Mary to. Oh, well, to be for public. Yeah, comment. we'll open you in a so, second. The, the, uh, the, that street is Bellevue and uh, uh, used to be Dutton or North Dutton. I think it's North Dutton. They call okay, it. okay. I know where that is. Okay. It's uh, Bellevue and North Dutton. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. But we will open June and then. Um, yep, so, um, so that will be opening. And then, um, there we go. The 2025 National Arts Program, um, our 22nd annual exhibit, um, the registration will be opening on November 11th. Um, you can find all this information on our website. Our website, um, srcity.org slash arts um, is now updated and it has this information on it. So registration opens on um, the 11th of November and it closes on January 3rd. Um, artwork drop-off will be February 1st and the reception is Sunday, March 9th from three to five. So please save that date uh, as so it'd be great for you to attend. Uh, participants must be a resident of Santa Rosa or an employee, retiree, or family member of an employee. Um, only one entry per artist will be um, submitted and um, all entries must be original work of the applicant completed in the last three years. 
So Meredith, are you taking over this now? Because I know where Jessica used to do work on this. So this mm -hmm. is your okay. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Um we have we have our Facebook, um, Santa Rosa Public Art on Instagram, Santa Rosa Public Art. That used to be the Outlier Santa Rosa. So we've switched it over to an arts and culture. So please follow us. We'll be posting a lot um, on there and sharing it with the community. Um, all of the open calls for art will be posted at, on our city website. Um, just today, um, I've done a little bit of an overhaul on the website. It's going to keep continuing, um, but you can see the open calls there, any uh, um, guidelines that were approved with the public art proposal form, all of that um, will be on our website. We also have a new art email for inquiries at arts at srcity.org. Oh. Yes, is that your end? Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for that presentation. Um, now, um, I wanted to know if, the, first of all, the committee has any questions or comments about any of these things to talk about, or did we get more to go on? Great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah any other comments? It does sound like, really, like a nice stack of things. Um, then uh, I'm going to open this up for. Um, if anyone wants to talk about the things that we're <laughs> listing out on the screen, do you have something to say? Yes, I do. Yeah. What about um, the same kind of thing? You get three minutes, and if you want to tell us your name, and that counts as my three minutes for you. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry told you my name, no, I'm just playing, but uh, the reason why I knew where that location was because I was I was called to go there from the city of Santa Rosa Water people. Who, they wanted me to do a mural there. Now, this is the first news that I need, that I heard that I need to submit all these things because they reached out to me. I gave my time to them to go talk to them, your guys' people. And then now I'm told from listening to what Meredith is saying, yeah, Joe, forget that conversation we had. Now this is open to everybody and we don't, uh, we're not going to talk to you anymore is what I'm hearing. Is that right? You just will need to apply. A what? They would need to apply. So I'll, I'll send you the information. So why would I need to apply if they came to me? We can talk about that after. Um, yeah, that's why I waited to talk. I want to engage in a back and forth conversation for public. Oh, people, really? Mm -hmm. So you just can make a comment and that's it. Nobody can answer your questions at all. It's up to the chair. Oh, wow. That's nice. Or the staff. <laughs> she, she could, like she said, she could follow up. With I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, um, as far as your exhibit goes, what, is, uh, what kind of artwork are you putting in your exhibit? So, which what exhibit? exhibit are you? Your art exhibit that you just said you got. After the next slide, whatever. Oh, the public art, the one, um, yeah. the national art exhibit? Yeah. That's like an open call. Right? Can I say mm -hmm. that? It's like an open call for anyone that wants to. Mm -hmm. Everyone is welcome. There's until it fills up. It, it's at the Finley Center, so there's so much room. And is it going to be an open call again for like age, like certain mm -hmm. ages? Yeah, they have ages. an open call for this it's age. It's on our website. Age. And skill level, too. Yeah. yeah. It's got lots of tiers. Skill level. Is this yep. uh, all different type of art, crafts or just art? Yep, crafts and art. Oh. Anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, that can be displayed. Or I know people that do uh, beadwork. Yes, yes. Colors. Oh my gosh. It's Rest. a good thing to know about. It's a I'm national doing lot, program. I'm doing a lot of feather work right now, too. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's some protected lot. cases so that it could be behind mm -hmm. glass. If I presented my feather work, then it would need to be protected. Yes. I got some eagle feathers, so I want that. Yeah. But uh, just 45 more seconds. <laughs> now, they uh, they did reach out to the city. I, I forget you knew their names uh, to see if people reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in doing a, a mural in the Oregon Creek. And I said yes. The reason they reached out to me is because I got the Spirit of Healing to mural at LCL. And so I said, great. How does that fit that I would do that mural there? And then you guys asked me to do this mural here, so I'll do this mural here. And uh, the idea for that mural, which I already talked to them about, which I thought was the plan we were going to do, was I was going to do 
basket designs along the pathway. And if they wanted to artwork along the wall there, I could have came up with a design for the wall as well. So um, that's what the discussion I had with the city employees prior to hearing this. Kind of disappointing. And invest my time and uh, get told something else. That's your time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that ends public comment. We will move to the last item. Wasn't Jocelyn supposed to do his mayor proposal? That's what he's going after that. Oh, there's yeah, okay. that. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay, so no motion or vote is needed for that informational presentation. And now we're moving to 7.5. Is that right? To the budget review. So, Meredith will present a budget review for 2022 to 23, 23 to 24, 24 to 25. And we will just, it's an information only that we'll talk about. Yeah, thank you. Um, I believe it was about two meetings ago. Um, it was requested to understand the budget a little bit more on what has been spent in last year's. Yeah. Um, so, in front of you, you will see. Um, to start with uh, 2022 to 23, it's gonna be too small to see on the screen. So we've also printed out, which is Thank a little you. small, but no, um, so you can take this home and, yeah. and take a look at it. It's mm -hmm. more the plan too. Um, you'll see um, our budgeted expenditures at the top of it, uh, of what we expect to spend um, in each of the different categories. Um, and then you'll also see revenue received. Um, the art in lieu fee is the 1% the for our ordinance. Um, so some years we do receive um, a good amount more than others. Um, the park acquisitions fees um, and then the National Arts Program does give us money every year um, to do that program. Mm -hmm. um, at the very bottom, you will see the actual expenditures and encumbrances. Um, so the encumbrances are contracts that we have. And so we set that money aside sort of on hold, knowing that it's going to be spent within that contract. Um, the different categories we have are citywide art. Um, the National Arts Program, our public art, public art and parks. Um, and you, you'll see the first year we had Courthouse Square Art. Um, so when we set its, uh, money aside for certain large projects like Courthouse Square Art, um, uh, that was 286.763. Um, we set that aside and that sometimes it's called the JL code, a different code. Um, so we're taking money out of that directly so we can sort of monitor those payments. Um, You'll see in 2023, 2022 to 2023, um, our total expenditures were $530,615. Um, that was mainly a lot larger due to the courthouse square our project. Um, in 2023 to 24, um, we received in um, a lot less of the art in Luffy, um, is something you'll also note. Um, only about 23,000, 24,000. Um, the year before, we received in about 113,000. Um, so that can vary quite a bit. Um, and we had a lot less expenditures. We only spent 120,000 on 121 um, because we didn't have um, that large of projects. Um, some of the other projects you'll see coming out of this were um, uh, Kidman Creative, we had the ADPC coaching, diversity training workshops, et cetera. Um, the last um, page on here is uh, so far this fiscal year of what we've spent, which you can see we have not spent much. We had some activity guide advertising that was pre-approved at the beginning of the year before I started. Um, and then the events contract, which is price of what we've spent so far. Um, we still have encumbered um, $10,000 of preservation arts, which is our art maintenance. Um, we have an events contract, um, the Artworks Foundry, which is the Rufusawa panels. And then we still have some left with the Kinsey Creative contract. Um, so those are still set aside. Um, we don't expect to spend um, that much um, through the rest of this fiscal year because a lot of these projects, a temporary art walk, um, really probably won't come out until next fiscal year. Um, we'll be taking out the Earth Day art. Um, we'll have more from the events contract. Um, so please review, and then um, you could also just let me know if you have any questions. So hopefully this just gives you an idea of sort of how we're spending the money each year and where it's coming out of. Um, 
So the Unum sculpture, the 252, there, how much of that was in the loop? That because wasn't it um this I believe came out of the courthouse for reunification project. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was for all of it because I didn't we put anything extra towards that too or no? No, I would have to look that okay. I'm not sure. I can look at it. I had um, a couple questions just because I had the reason I, I know what to ask for this because I just feel used at times about how many kind of and this is one way of presenting which is a different way and I feel like I, I pulled an older um, summary that we got I think it looks like it was in 2022 I just had it in my file mm -hmm. which just shows like private development brought this much in for this year city contributed this much mm -hmm. total rev other things which could be a lot of things, you know, came from. And then the total revenue, total expenditure balance. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I look at that, I can kind of go, okay, I see that that's a bottom line for a spreadsheet. Obviously there's many more details, but I get a little bit confused when I see stuff on different, I don't know about you guys, when I see it on different forms and different. Do you like, want to send me the one that you found? And I'm more than happy to put it in that format oh, for you. I think, yes, that's exactly. Okay. I, I was just like, I wasn't sure like kind of how we'd see it. So that's what it's helpful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just that. like the fund balance, like according to this document that we were handed in 2022, there was a $1 million fund balance. I mean, like where did, where, like, how did that come up? I mean, I just, I'll just give you the document you can, um, Look at it, but I was like, I just don't understand where they rolled over when what comes for and after. Is it going other places? It just seems like we don't manage it, but as a board, we would want to see it. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not responsible for it, obviously. I, I think too, when we had that one million too, it wasn't taking into account that we had 300, what was it, 300 put to the side for the roof Sawa. Right. And, and that's what it threw me off at that last meeting was because. Then when we got received those, it didn't state that. Right. And I understand that when you say encumbrance, that means that we still we're over that. Like that money is yes. earmarked for that, right? That's and it was terminology. So technically, if you're looking at 2022 to 23, we have we spent 530000 You had 360 still encumbered, right? So that's mm -hmm. eight, almost 900000 right there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. starting in 2022. But if you want to email me that sheet that you have, I'm happy to break it down into... Totally. I just think it would just... If that, I think that could be maybe going forward a great way for people just to be able to kind of track with the same information, same mm -hmm. format, and then you could build the details and mm -hmm. that would be helpful. Anyone else have questions about... I do like this right now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, like, like I do too. I'm just saying, I, okay. but the bottom line... I, I mean, I just like it both. I, yeah, yeah. Obviously, we are all probably like have our special favorite ways of doing. It. No, is Bryce in this got budget? Is he like his position? What is he called? Uh, he's the events PSA contract. And then, are we responsible like, totally for him, or is other people paying part of his salary? We pay a portion of it, and the yeah. portion of him comes from SRTBA funding yeah. as well, because that's um, for events. Right. Yes. I figured it. Yeah, I knew he was doing lots of different. And there's no money for like what Jessica used to do. Um, you're right. Currently, we don't have that position open, uh, yeah. but you will see in the past um, the arts specialist contract. No, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're doing her job too, and your job. Right. Yeah, right. I get it. It's a lot. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I'm not so much like have to see it exactly thing. I guess I just would like to regularly, if I was looking at it, to see the fund balance, like so we know where we're at. Um, and maybe I'm seeing that. Maybe that is the bottom line there. Is that am I misunderstanding? It's the bottom corner. Well, we have our budgeted expenditures, and then we also have a fund balance. So yeah. the fund balance is what's not is not it's what's not budgeted for. So right. I believe our current <laughs> fund balance is possibly maybe one hundred fifty thousand. But I'd have to get that exact from our admin analyst. Um, from what we we yeah. budget everything, and then we also have the the backup reserve. Of, set aside that is not budgeted for. And I truly understand that you I would seem very comfortable with like how you're looking it all out. Just if you could scope it. That's good. Okay. My confusing questions. I don't have the 
We're putting this together. Yes, yes it's really you. great that you did this. It is. I, I spent some time looking at it and I'm trying to figure yeah. out all the different things. It's answering a lot of my questions. Yeah. I mean, it's really clear in terms of a lot of things we haven't seen in this kind of format. So it really helped to see it all by year and all summary. Thanks. So thank you for that. Any other questions about that? Money? Is that public comment on this? Public comment on money? Okay. Budget? Um, okay, then I will end this one. And we are going to now return to 7.1, which is now all right. No. We yes, we will move to 7.5. Yeah, okay, so. good. So these move to 7.5. Good. So um we now have a Pomo Creek mural with Landscape Extension with artist Joe Salinas. We'll present a public art proposal for the mural on Prince Memorial Greenway. Our recommended action will be to approve the design and um, approve $1,000 for the Pomo Creek mural. Landscape Extension. Hey, Joe, thank you. So as you're going to see here, let's do the slides. <laughs> Feel free to just say next slide for me. No, 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 I'll just mess it around. <laughs> so, uh, when I let me just tell you guys first, um, we did this mural back, I think, in 2008 or 2009. And one thing, if you guys want to email me or what, because I don't know how long your uh, graffiti stuff lasts, how long does that last? Do you know? Uh, like five to eight years. Okay, because I wouldn't mind to come back if I could do it myself in five to eight years. I hit it again, I'll hit it again. But what happened this time is the city neglected to re hit it with the uh, graffiti mm -hmm. protecting. And then when the Meredith went over there, I went over there too. It just takes it all off the whole thing because there was no protecting. So, um, Lisa knows a little bit about me when I was younger and my machismo, I'm not the kind of man to be crying around, but um, I'd be, be lying to you guys if I didn't tell you that I cried when I saw what they did to my work. I had dreams of taking my grandkids there one day that I don't have and showing them that this is our work that I did with your parents. And when those graffiti, those people that vandalized it did that, they took that away from me and my grandkids that I don't got yet. So that sucked because I thought that was a legacy piece of mine that I was going to be able to share with my family and hopefully everybody else in the community. So then the next uh, deal was to um, redo it. I wanted to redo it. That was so if I can't clean it up, then I need to redo it. So then that's when uh, thankfully Meredith was even asked, yeah, you know what, Joe, we'll, we'll help you to fund it to redo it. And I was like, right on. Good looking out city because uh, outside of our work, I'm also um, looking to rename a few parks and uh, get a black redone at Flat Rock Park. So I've been going to city meetings doing that as well. But uh, not, and I again, I wasn't trying to be no city guy going to make changes in the city. But if I don't try to do something to change it for my grandkids, like I was telling you that I don't got yet, or my ancestors for that matter. I don't see any other of our people stepping up to um, do these things. And um, when I went to a meeting just recently in uh, for the Rosen Elementary, and they're talking about their native museum, there's a woman that said, well, if the Pomo people aren't worried about it, then why should we? And I stood up and I said, I am here. And when I am worried about it, and that's why I'm here to talk on these things. But ultimately, even as non-native people, if you know you're living in an indigenous area of certain people, so you think they would have a little bit more honor or respect towards those people and want to do something for them, even if those people aren't there to represent themselves, which is kind of, again, disappointing. But then you told me every time that I think about it, I didn't want to miss a meeting to go do something that I want to go do. I hear that woman's voice. If you Pomo people aren't here, why should we care? Because that's how I feel the city thinks about us and California for that matter. If you don't believe me, tell me a park that's named after an indigenous person in Sonoma County. Yeah. And then Howard Burbank, everybody else but us. 
but outside of that, um, so I was able to, uh, to uh, get the funding to, to help to redo the uh, mural. And uh, so if you wouldn't mind to show the, the next slide. Uh, so that's um, the original piece that I wanted to do was the whole thing. That's what I presented to Meredith that I wanted to do the whole thing to connect it to the other part. And I got a, I got a Heisman. No, that has to be uh, that has to be authorized from the committee before you can add on that extra piece. And I was like, well, we're gonna be there already, and we're gonna have everything else, and all the artists will be there. We can knock it out pretty quick. And we would have probably accomplished it that day, that that part of it. But we would have probably, like, I still wanted to come back. Part of what you don't see, what I wanted to do in the original. Uh, sector of that part was there was um, butterflies and there was also um, uh, what's the name of that flower? The, the orange flower? Um, poppy? poppy? Poppy, yeah, the, those pop, the California flowers were there along with butterflies. So um, that's what you don't see in the, the, the image there. That's what I still wanted to bring back was some more butterflies and poppies. And then the same thing with the, the second part, I wanted to also add in some more Poppies and butterflies, and possibly an eagle or a, a hawk in the sky to uh, represent a little bit more of our people in that way. But um, this is what I was asking the city to allow me to do now that I and I realized that I take time off work to come and talk to you guys to ask you for permission. But uh, hopefully, with your permission, I would like to uh, extend the mural and um, add a little bit more landscape to it, giving it a little bit more life than it already has. Um, I can also tell you the next day after we did it, I went down there just to go check on it because I was worried about it because it didn't have graffiti protected on it yet. <laughs> we just did all this work. And if you knew the riffraff that was down there, you would understand why I was a little protected. <laughs> oh, man. So I went down there, and uh, when I went down there, I didn't say nothing. There's this guy who was just standing right in front of me. And uh, he was just like, I was like, cool. Oh. You know what I mean? That, that to me made me feel good that it was already one day there and there was already a person there that was like drawing into the colors, into the, the scene, into the, the medicine that we're trying to provide for our community. So um, that's really what that's about. Uh, a little bit more history on that is um, 2015, I did a little bit of research on the Santa Rosa Creek, like I'm telling y'all, should rename the park over there in Flat Rock Park. And that's all along with the history of the creek. But um, when I read the history of Santa Rosa, it said that the second largest village was right there at Flat Rock Park. And the first largest village was at West Third and Santa Rosa Creek. I didn't know that when that all that happened. So when I read that, I just kind of make all my arms and my hands stand up like I'm with that mural supposed to be there, to represent the tribe that was there. So everything happens for a reason in that way. And creator made that happen in that way, and that can represent our people. That was that once fed off the water that used to be good in the creek there, because uh, one time it was drinkable. I wouldn't do that no more. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, so that the, uh, uh, that is the, what the idea that I have for this uh, particular one, and uh, I can email uh, you know, you guys to uh, bring that back. Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. Images and words. Um, any questions or comments? From Joe, do you want to tell us exactly who that figure is? in your the painting um, the tree it was just the image that i came up with like in 2007 it was a, a okay. homo dude and uh, then the baskets and then the um the ladies and the kids running i thought if you look at the other image that was there it was just a tree yes like a grass and nothing behind the whole reason that i there's a, a lake and, a, and mountains now and sky is because when they graffitied it it went across the whole thing so like at first, the city was saying for me just to go redo what we had, had already redone. And I was like, no, if that's the case that I don't even want to touch it until, because they wanted me to get authorization from you guys to even do the water and the mountains. And I said, but I already got authorization back in 2008 to do these things. 
So if I'm only touching this panel, why can't I just touch that panel and add in that little bit of landscape? I don't see why it's that much of a change from the original. So finally, the uh, Meredith and uh, Scott, I believe, were nice enough to say yes and uh, go ahead and allow that and uh, keep it to that one panel and you can uh, add in the, the landscape and the lake. So that's, to me, it was, um, when we originally did it, that was kind of what I had and we didn't have that much time and it was a little bit of what we had. I did it with my dance crew and uh, art start at the time. And then uh, now my dance crew that did it with me that time, they're all adults and they was too cool to come out and paint this time. <laughs> Even my own children. But um, this time, uh, so I said, you know what, if we're going to redo it, yes, I would like to redo it and make it look better. So that's why I uh, uh, one of the artists that helped to lead it with me, his name is uh, Bobby Mc, uh, Von Martin. He was in a Disney uh, movie just recently, the native one, uh, I forgot what it was called, they were talking about it. He did some artwork for them, but he's like a mural artist from uh, Fresno, native guy. So uh, that's why I wanted, I, I, the money that was provided to me, I paid him to come over here and help me to, because I'm an artist, but I don't really do uh, too many murals. This is the second mural. My first, this is the first one. The second one's at um, Elsie Allen High School. Right. Yeah, the Spirit right. of Healing. Great. Excellent. So, uh, but um, hopefully, with support from you guys again, um, I have a lot more ideas for a lot more murals and I'm mm -hmm. um, looking to do more, a lot more work here and uh, do a little bit more representation of our indigenous people of Sonoma County, Santa Rosa. If you guys help. Any other questions, comments? Okay, any public comments? Okay. All right, we're gonna need a motion to approve this project plan. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve design and a thousand dollars for um, the Formal Creek mural landscape extension. And I second it. That's it. Thank you. All right. I think we're ready for a vote. Yep, All right. right, thank you. Chair Bumgardner. Aye. Uh, committee member Azadirian. Yes. Committee member Faulkner. Yes. Committee member Puentes. Yes. All right, that motion passes with four votes uh, to approve the design for the Pomo Creek mural landscape extension um, and that $1,000. It was really hot that day, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised how hot it was. Jeez. <laughs> okay, we're going to go. Um, is there any reports from staff? More reports? No. Okay. Um, any um, committee members have any general comments or announcements at this time? There you go. Okay. I would tell you that the next regular meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee is scheduled for Monday, December 2nd, 2024. Thank you, everyone. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.